Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Adobe Live. My name is Howard Pinsky, Senior XD Evangelist here at Adobe. Hope you're all doing well. I have the privilege of sitting down with the amazing Marissa Blair. How are you, Marissa? Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be joining you. Thank you so much for having me. How's everyone doing? Yeah, and, and, and as Raphael said, welcome back, Marissa. Some Thank of you may you. not know that Marissa has been a frequent guest on Adobe Live. She ran the Daily Creative Challenges many, many moons ago, which were fantastic. <laughs> and many of the, you know, the templates that Marissa has put together, many of the ideas, we've kind of run with so uh, you know a huge thank you to marissa if you take part in the daily creative challenges definitely give marissa a thank you but before thank we jump so into much. things i want to say hello to everyone joining me in chat and marissa of course uh vipin and Raphael and Hi. adobe live voodoo val and christian and zoe and cameron mustafa julia everyone else if you are tuning in definitely let me know let marissa know i keep saying me i'm so used to streaming by myself sorry about that um let us know who you are and where you're tuning in from so with that said let me hop over to my screen just for a second you know what i can't do that because i don't have that shot set up i'm gonna let marissa uh give her intro and then i'm gonna sit i'm gonna hop over to my screen just for a few moments to kind of get you going let you know what we have planned for today including some interesting, fun little tidbits. But let's hop over to Marissa's screen and take it away, Marissa. Awesome. Well, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Marissa Blair, and I'm a UI UX designer and content creator. Um, you might know me from my... Oh, if you are a subscriber. All right, so just a little bit about me. So I am from Toronto, Canada. Uh, my zodiac sign is Aries. I, uh, my first design job actually was web designer at UHN, which stands for the University Health Network here in Toronto. And currently I am founder at ExoPixel and ExoPixel Creative, which is my own um, design studio where I create you know, websites and different brand collaterals for um, different businesses. Nice. All right, so this is the agenda for the next two days. So today for day one, just gonna go over the projects with you guys and I will be creating a business creation app. So I'm super excited about that. Um, and we're also gonna be designing some wireframes. And then for day two, um, we're gonna get into, you know, defi defining the visuals, the visual design of the app. And we're also gonna get into prototyping, which I'm really excited about. Ooh, I always love prototyping. I know. All right, so now is the perfect time to start a business. Um, everyone is online, so you're going to get a huge audience, um, and especially if you're interested in starting an online business. Um, so you can start a creative business, you can start a blog, you can become an influencer or even start a YouTube channel. Um, and I'm sure everyone, you know, joining us today in the Behance chat is super creative, so you can, you know, become a freelancer. But um, nonetheless, sky's the limit in terms of the business you can create. So um, yeah, and be sure to check out that song because it's it's one of my favorite songs. It's so uh, motivational. <laughs> nice. All right, so I'm just gonna go over, um, I guess, the three steps to starting a business. So um, the first step is to create a business plan. And a business plan is essentially where you just you know outline your business goals and objectives. But without a business plan, um, it's gonna be really hard for you to apply maybe for a bank loan if you'd like to do that to start your business. Um, and I know in Ontario to get you know government support because there's a lot of um, support programs for entre entrepreneurs. Um, if you don't have a business plan to show them, um, they probably you know won't be able to really help you in terms of meeting your business goals and objectives. Yeah, I went through that as well because I'm originally from Toronto, and my initial business, which was called Isoflow Studios, was created in Toronto. And I definitely ran into the, some of those issues where banks just wouldn't even look at me because you know I was driving some revenue, but I didn't really have a plan in action to to get a loan, so they just didn't want to talk to me. Yeah, it's so important to you know have a business plan. 
Um, yeah. And the second step is to perform a name search. So um, performing a name search ensures that your name is exclusively yours, your business name. And if you don't do that, your name could already be in use by a, di a different company and you definitely don't want that. Um, and then of course, the last step is step number three, and that is to register your business name. Um, and really quickly, there's three different kinds of business um, types. So the first is sole proprietor, second is corporation, and then finally partnership. Um, and I'll get into more of that as we're, you know, designing. But um, if you don't register your business, you could potentially face some penalties. So um, it's definitely important to follow all of these steps. Sweet. All right, so um, that leads us into today's project. So I will be creating a business creation app. Um, and the goal for this app is to allow users to easily create a business utilizing tools and resources that assist with business planning, naming, registration, and branding. Nice, and before you jump into a little bit further, let me, yeah. let me actually hop over to my screen just for a second. And I want to touch on two things. So one, we're going to be doing portfolio reviews in about an hour and a half, about half an hour before the stream ends. So hop over to the XD Discord. Someone, one of the mods is going to post a link and go into the portfolio review tab. Go ahead and submit your portfolio. We'll pick two of them and we'll take a look at them. I always love portfolio reviews. The second thing is we recently, in addition to announcing two new creative residents at Adobe, we launched a $1 million dollar creative residency fund. So if you're a creator, and this is worldwide, I believe, there's a blog post that someone's gonna post a link to in the chat. If you're a creator who might be struggling during these terrible times, you can uh, apply for a grant and there's details down here. It's, depending on the project, it's anywhere from $500 to $5,000, which is absolutely incredible. And there's a million dollars up for the taking. So, I mean, why not, right? Apply. If you have an yeah, interesting why? project you want to tackle, isn't that cool? Yes. That's crazy. And the team worked so hard because, you know, traditionally the creative, creative residency, we pick a bunch of residents every year. They come on board um, as contractors at Adobe. We pay them salary, pay, uh, give them benefits and that sort of thing. But they really took the opportunity to shift the strategy and make it available to a lot more people with this million dollar fund, which is super cool. Wow. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna hop back over to your screen and uh, yeah, let's talk business. Let's talk business. <laughs> All right, so um, I encourage you to Google search how to start a business in your region. And when I did that in Ontario, how to start a business in Ontario, um, I did run into some problems. Mm, so yeah, every, as a every user- Every area is different, yeah. right? Yeah. So as the user, I noticed that there was no clear, you know, step-by-step -step business creation process that I can, you know, see. I also noticed that the site was really text heavy um, and starting a business is such an amazing thing. And I just felt it to be so uninspiring and there's definitely room to improve that, you know, the layout, the look and just the overall experience. And then of course, as you can see the mobile site um, again, there was definitely opportunity to improve on that. And that's what led me to creating an app. <laughs> nice. All right, so the goal of the app. So um, I definitely want the app to have a clear business creation process that's outlined for users. Um, I want it to be user friendly and motivational, whether that be through, you know, subtly through colors or even just, you know, different um, micro inter interactions and yeah, so I'm definitely excited to be innovative and really creative with this app. I like the motivational part because I found, especially talking with designers who are trying to come up with their own business or, or go freelance or whatever it might be, that they don't have a lot of motivation, especially when they get to this business part, like you're showing earlier, some of the flows and some of the websites that they land on is just way too much text as Jennifer's yeah. pointing out uh, text just way too much text it's overwhelming um, it is and they don't they don't really know what to click on they don't know what the benefits are of certain things and many of them give up which is sad because there's so many good ideas out there that yeah. just kind of get lost in, in cyberspace exactly so any way that we you know us designers can just find 
opportunities to improve, you know, a current experience that's out there, whether it be through an, a website or an app. Like, um, let's let's do that. Let's try to make you know the web a better place <laughs> yeah and you're a perfect person to be tackling this because not only have you gone through the process of starting a business but you're yeah. running a very successful business so <laughs> thank you you know put those two things together and the it's fact a grind that you're, a, you're a great designer so you know oh, i'm shucks. excited to see what comes from this oh shucks thank you you're so kind <laughs> all right so um i need your help so everyone in the chat Think of a business name. Um, as oh I'm going through designing the business or the business creation app, um, I'm hoping that you guys can, you know, just share different business name ideas. And um, hopefully by the, you know, tomorrow, I can prototype the registration experience using a name that um, we come up with. So definitely share some business names. Yeah, it's always exciting when the chat gets involved and try to come up with a, you know, a pretty, pretty decent name um we don't want like business mcbusiness face or something um but yeah i'm excited to see what the chat comes up with because they're always so yeah. creative i love You're i should so just do creative. all my projects live on air because you get so yeah, many good ideas <laughs> yeah i agree all right so some takeaways while i'm here so first and foremost i just hope this you know maybe motivates you to create your own business um and also i hope you you know learn some new Adobe XD tips and tricks, which I know you will because Howard P uh, Pinsky is the Adobe evangelist and master. <laughs> <laughs> and um, also tune into my live streams on Behance and YouTube. Um, I will be live streaming in the near future, so um, definitely stay tuned for that. Yeah, so we already have some business names coming in. We also have Beck who's asking, are you planning on making this app a website as well? Sounds like a fantastic project. I would love to, you know, flesh this out as a web experience. So stay tuned for that on my future live streams. Nice. Yeah, I also can't wait to see your live streams. Um, you know, Behance is now opening up the ability for users to go live. Mm -hmm. And I think it's slowly rolling out as the team adds more features and tackles bugs and that sort of thing. But we're starting to see a lot of really great user live streams across the board from video editing to Fresco and to XD. So yeah, looking forward to your streams. All right, so let's start designing. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, so let me go to my working file. All right, so as you can see, I already kind of you know, laid out the different screens already. Um, just in case you are, you know, watching this as a replay or you're kind of tuning in halfway, this will hopefully show you the screen that I'm working on. Um, and I will be using um, Google Material Design for this app just to switch things up from Ooh. iOS. <laughs> I like that. We, we often, yeah. I, I'm, I'm definitely guilty of this during the daily challenges. It's a lot of just iPhone templates and and yeah. iOS design. So it's nice to see that we're going in a Google material. We're living in a yeah. material world. Yeah, I think this will be really cool to just explore material design a yeah. little more. Um, okay, so um, yeah, so if you're interested in setting up or getting the Google material design UI kit, um, super easy. So in XD, all you need to do is go to file, get UI kits, and then you'll find material design right here. So just click it and then you'll get the kit. So I already kind of set up, you know, my artboard to have everything I needed. So the first screen that I'm going to work on is the splash screen. All right, so I have my um, safe guys here already laid out. And I'm just going to... And if anyone has questions for Marissa as she's designing about maybe her business or even working in Adobe XD or design decisions, definitely throw them in the chat. I am paying attention. And Val says, because Howard is a material girl living in a material world. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, throw, throw your questions in the chat and I will ask Marissa. All right, so it's so going to be designing... really simple. Oh, sorry to interrupt, Marissa. Um, when you're designing a project like this, do you typically start with wireframes? Do you start with sketches? Do you start high fidelity? What's your process look like? That's a good question. So I actually did 
do some sketching over here. Ooh, they were hiding to the side. Yeah, <laughs> so it's really messy. I mean, I'm not, this is not like the best work <laughs> that I've done. Listen, I um, get I get very <laughs> worried when I see very, very beautiful sketches. I, yeah. I just get very worried and also very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know what the, suspicious maybe? I don't know. Oh. But sketches are, are almost meant to be very, dirty and they're meant to be sketchy and you other yeah. people other than you should not be able to understand what's happening exactly that's totally what i'm going for like only i can understand the chicken scratch that's here yeah <laughs> yeah so i just kind of really quickly just you know did some sketching on how i want um the screens to look like basically um just so i have an idea in terms of just the structure before i jump into the you know XD, the software. Yep. Um, and then actually another thing that I did was I actually created artboards that it's not, I wouldn't say it's like the, it's, I guess it's a wireframe, but it's like the rough version of also the content that I'm trying to, you know, lay out because um, there's a lot of, especially in the business registration process, there's so many different questions and um, processes that you have to go through and this yep. was just a way for me to like figure out how I'm going to lay it out on the screen. I can't even imagine what it's like working for one of these business registration websites or companies or whatever it might be. The amount of yeah. thinking that goes on with something like this must just be I would really love to see like their art boards for because like yeah. you said, there's there's so many different questions. There's so many different paths a user can go down. And then you have to think like, what question comes first? And there's so much exactly. user research behind it. It's a oof. It's you a lot. Some... And it, yeah. Hey, go ahead. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's why I definitely, I had to do this. Like I had to, I couldn't even write it all down. Like I really wanted to just type it all. And I was like rearranging all the words and just little elements that I, you know, drew buttons and all that stuff. So before I even did a more, um, I guess, high fidelity wireframe, I just put all the content on here and just play it around with it like it was a puzzle. <laughs> yeah, we do have some questions starting to come in. Vipin is asking, where do you take your inspiration from? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I love going on Behance to see mm. like what creative work is out there. Um, Instagram, I follow some really talented people um, and not even just UI, UX designers, um, artists, illustrators, graphic designers, um, directors, movies, um, television. Like I just, there's just so many places where I pull inspiration from, even nature. Oh yeah. Um, just yeah. All the projects I work on, I mean, I definitely pull inspiration from so many different sources. Totally. I think I'm on Dribble and Behance all day, especially when yeah. I get in a little bit of a rut and I just can't figure out what to design or how something should look. Just go on one of these websites, search for what you're trying to design, and you get so much, you get so many amazing designs, even if it's just a simple shot of the final yeah. result it can definitely spark a ton of inspiration. I agree. All right. So Raphael's asking, when testing prototypes with users, should you use a gray wireframe or visual UI design? Um, I would say, Hmm, that's a good question. I think if you're testing with users, you'd probably want it to look as close to the final product as possible. But um, I guess it definitely depends on um, your preference. I guess it's up to you to decide. Yeah, I think it also could depend on where you are in the process. Like if you're at the very beginning, the especially the user experience side of things, I think my personal opinion that you should strip as much color out as possible because then if you hand it over to a client they might get distracted by the pretty pinks and the pretty reds and the blues that they yeah. might kind of ignore the fact that you know the user experience might not be exactly what it should be so at the very beginning if you haven't got the user experience approved it could be good just to have a bunch of buttons kind of like what you're designing now just mm -hmm. a logo 
placeholder for a logo, a bunch of buttons, just to kind of test exactly, you know, what people are pressing on. Are they kind of understanding the flow? And then once that's kind of nailed down, then you can start adding the pretty colors. Yeah, exactly. So Mark is saying the issue when presenting wireframes to users, as well as your clients, stakeholders, etc., is not everyone is capable of using their imagination to fill in the gray wireframe. So that's another that's another side to this debate. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm just designing, you know, login, sign up buttons. Now at this stage in the in the process, when you're kind of uh, wiring things up and, and just blocking things out. Are you mm -hmm. concerned about using components just yet? Or is that something that comes a little bit later on? I, I would say it comes a little later on yeah. for sure. Um, I'm just trying to get um, just a sense of the structure. Yep. Um, but if I think um, it would be a good time to kind of maybe flesh out a component, um, I might do that, but it just depends really. Totally. So I'm going to have a nice image right here. And then... So in, Ina, Ina is asking, can you explain the UX slash UI versus web design or how you transition from web designer to UX and UI? Um, so I actually definitely started in web design, but the transition for UI UX design, I guess it mostly was through my YouTube channel. Mm. Yeah. So I definitely got into that. I mean, I do know web design and then web development. So just developing, um, websites or like the mobile version of a website. Um, that kind of led me into um, how to design an application and um, yeah, that's just how I got into, I guess, the mobile design. Nice. And do you think um, all, all the previous work that you've done has helped where you're currently at? Um, yeah, definitely. A lot of practice. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Now I see you have a bunch of components on the left side in your assets panel. Did those come from the UI kit? Yes. Well, uh, yes, it came from, well, no, it came from the material design website. Okay. So yeah, there's a really great website. So material design, they have a bunch of icons and resources that you can just download. Nice. Yeah. Can you see it on my screen? All right, so let's open to design the sign up screen. So I'll put a title here. Sign up. So thinking about the, the user experience, you're going to you're gonna have the sign in and sign up on separate screens, right? Yes. Okay. So, yeah. So the flow is, um, you know, this splash screen, and then it's going to go to um, the, you know, login, sign up screen, and then the user will click sign up because they don't have an account, and then they're going to create their account on this screen. Got it. So this is where an icon will be. What do you think the biggest challenge is going to be on an application like this? I think the biggest challenge, oh, that's a good question. I think the biggest challenge would be, hmm, I think just laying out all the information that's required um, and just trying to make it very, like the user flow really um, easy to follow mm -hmm. because the business um, creation process is so complex or it can be but um as we saw on the business um ontario website the business registration website um just translating that into a really user-friendly experience i think that will be the challenge totally 
and Raphael is saying, it seems like you're using the 8 pixel grid. How far do you go to use 8 pixels? Is it just spacing or do you use it for fonts, corners, shapes, etc.? Um, I use it for spacing. I use it to, you know, align icons and I know for text you can use the four CP grid, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, I definitely use it for pretty much everything. Nice. And for those who are wondering, what's the reasoning behind using an eight pixel grid versus 10 or 12 or two? Um, I would say that instead of using, I guess, your design eye to space items on, you know, an application, you definitely want to keep things consistent, especially if you're working with a team. Um, so you definitely want to use a grid system. And I know the eight um, pixel grid system is definitely, um, you can easily divide it. Right. And you, it, you know, you run the risk of not, not using or not running or sorry, you, you won't get decimal points. You want whole numbers. So, you know, you definitely want to make sure you're using um, a really good, easily divisible, you know, grid. <laughs> yeah. I think your developers will definitely like you. Yeah. And speaking of developers, maybe we'll get to this a little bit later on, but what's the relationship look like? Like, you know, after you've built out this application, either in the wireframe phase or the high fidelity phase, how do you mm -hmm. typically work with de developers? Um, so as a developer, I actually, um, well, generally you want to make sure that, um, oh, sorry. Um, you definitely want to make sure that you're able to communicate um, just what you're working on and yeah. So Zoe is asking, at what point will you hand the wireframes to the developers? Um, so you definitely want to hand your wireframes when I guess you... Um, Sorry, you want to hand your wireframes to developers when they're done and... <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. So for something like this, the, um, you know, the email fields, passwords, would you at this stage put icons there as well or do you just leave it as plain text? Um... I definitely want to make sure I'm labeling everything. Mm. Yeah. Oh, and also Val has just posted a link to a survey. If you scroll up a little bit, there's a, she said, check out the Adobe Live survey. We're looking for feedback to uh, hear your thoughts on how Adobe Live is, you like the shows, that sort of thing. So definitely scroll up there, click on that link. And if you have a moment, definitely fill that out. So someone, Laura is asking, what is the most, what is mo more useful for UI and UX designer? Uh, hold on. What is more useful for UI and UX designer as an additional knowledge, front end development skills or marketing and content creation skills? That's a good question. Um, what is, uh, can you repeat the question? Sure. What is more useful for a UI and UX designer, front end development skills or marketing and creation skills? Hmm. I would say UI. UX skills. I would definitely say that because um, if you're a developer, you want to, you know, understand the UI UX design process and how to um, lay everything out on screen and how to translate the designs that you, the designer provided to you. Yeah, and do you think it's do you think it's important as a designer to to know front end skills like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, even back end skills? Yeah, I definitely think so. I mean, you definitely want to 
you know, know both sides. You want to know how the developer can translate your designs. You want to, and as a developer, you want to know how the designer is uh, or wants you to translate their designs onto a mobile experience. Yeah, I agree. I think it's it's important to know a little bit of both worlds. You know, not everyone's going to be able to understand all of it. They won't be able to be a designer and then also a developer as well, at least to the extent where they can design and fully develop an application or a website. But as a designer, I have found that it's very useful to know at least a little bit, at least the basics of HTML, CSS, a little bit of JavaScript. That way I know what my developers are really capable of because mm -hmm. too often do we see designers hand over something that looks absolutely beautiful with these amazing animations and then the developer basically looks at them and says, what am I supposed to do with this, right? Yeah, it definitely shows you um, the capabilities of mobile. Yeah. Um, so it's definitely important to design knowing what is possible and what is not maybe possible for your developers to, you know, yep. create. Yeah, and it could definitely vary based uh, depending on the team you're working with. You know, there's a lot that's possible on mobile yeah. these days with Swift and all these other development applications. But just because something might be possible doesn't necessarily mean that the team you're working with knows how to do it to that level. So having a good uh, relationship with your developers will definitely help you as a designer hand over something that they can work with. Yeah, for sure. All right, so I'm just designing the onboarding experience. Okay. Just in case you're tuning in or you're wondering what I'm doing right now. <laughs> and what are you thinking while, while you're designing the onboarding experience? Is there an optimal, optimal number of steps? Is there uh, you know, a certain d design flow that you're looking for? What's, what's going through your mind right now? So with this onboarding experience, I want to just, you know, express the top user benefits of using this app. Um, I don't want to overwhelm with every single feature this app will have. And I right. want to just strictly, you know, promote what I think what or what is the best for the user. So um, I'm just going to keep it simple and just stick to three screens. Um, and hopefully whoever is using my app is very you know excited to use it so they don't want to you know swipe through like 10 different you know um, screens that are showing the i guess features and benefits mm -hmm. so i definitely want to keep it simple yeah and how would you typically figure out what the most important three features would be because of course you know an app like this like you said, you can have 10 different screens. You can probably even have a lot more because there would be a ton of features in an application like this. So how would you yeah. nail that down? Um, I guess, I mean, maybe even because of my experience being, you know, or having gone through the business creation process. Um, I know when I was starting my business, um, I it definitely would be helpful to learn how to create a business plan and to really know the different sections that are needed for a business plan. Um, I'm also going to highlight the fact that you can, you know, register your business and you can actually name your business. Mm -hmm. um, so there's going to be some really cool features in this app where you can even um, generate some business names. So you can just, you know, use a, you know, a search term like, I want my business to, or my business name to have the word design in it. And then you type in that query and then it's going to um, generate a bunch of different business names or potential business names that you can use with the term design in it. That could be interesting because, you know, an application like this, I would imagine would be connected directly with maybe the trademark association or the copyright uh, mm -hmm. company whatever I don't know what they're called the agency possibly that yeah. um, you know that's for that state or province or whatever it might be so they can check directly to see if those names are or are not available and if someone's doing one of those name generators then it could automatically exclude the ones that might be taken already exactly it's gonna search all of the databases the trademark database the 
um, business registration uh, database and um, even domain names. It's going to search domain names mm. to see if that is possibly taken. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to get into showing you how it's all going to work. Yeah, I think that's one of the most tricky parts of starting a business is that everything is taken these days. I know everything is taken. You really have to be very innovative with your names. Yeah, thankfully there's more and more, um, what are they called? Like .com, .org, that sort of uh, extensions coming out for websites uh, every single year. So, you know, there's a little bit of flexibility, but still you, you basically look for anything, anything .com and it's probably taken. <laughs> exactly. And many of it is not even, it's just by squatters. I've been trying to get a specific domain name <laughs> for about 10 years now, and it's just a completely blank page. And there's yeah. there's nothing I can do to get that name unless I have it trademarked. And even if I have it trademarked, it's a whole hassle to get that specific domain name. Mm -hmm. I, I know it's so hard these days. So yeah. I just want to really quickly go over what I um, just did. So um, I created the splash screen. Um, this will definitely be more clear on how, you know, I want the splash screen intro to look when I'm prototyping it. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, right now it's just really, um, just, you know, putting the logo and just writing out logo, but I do have, you know, some really cool, um, branding that I can't wait to share for you tomorrow on day two. Um, so right now just this logo and then for the login sign up screens, um, again, this is just gonna, you know, show you, you can either log in if you're, you know, a ready user or you can sign up. And then it's going to bring you to a sign up page. You're going to enter your name, email, password, and then click the sign up button. And then when you, you know, you're inside of the app, before you get into the home screen, you're just going to, you know, see some really cool, um, you know, onboarding screen. So the top user benefits of the app. And now we're going to go to the home screen. And nice. I chose create a business plan, name your business and design a brand. So um, those are the three really cool features that this app will have. I love it. And speaking of business, earlier you asked for potential names for this application or business. Uh, we did have a few of them come in and if anyone's awesome. just tuning in, definitely throw some additional names in there. But we had launch up, let's biz with a Z, three, two, one, start get busy uh, a1 startup biz up taking care of business talent wear bubble maker so the That's first a... one was launch up the first I'm gonna create a list oh okay launch so up. yeah launch up was one of them yep that was the first one and then let's biz with a Z let's biz cool. uh -huh. and then three two one start three two one start awesome and then we have one a startup so one like the number eight? one and then a yeah okay Start up. and then we've got biz up b-i-z up and okay. then taking care of business that's a fun one taking care of is it biz <laughs> uh, no that one's just that no? one's normal okay <laughs> awesome uh, thank you guys for sharing yeah, there, there's, yeah, keep, keep, uh, keep throwing, on coming. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Val loves get busy. That's a good one. All right. So again, we're going to have the logo Let's put it here. And with everything going on lately with, you know, the pandemic and everything, is there anything that you would add to this application or flow now that you probably wouldn't have added maybe a year ago. Hmm. Or I can also, question. you know, direct that question to the chat as well. If yeah. you're trying to, if you're trying to create a business through this pandemic, what would you like to see in an application like this to help you out? Yeah, let me know. And how have you been Marissa throughout this pandemic? Um, I mean, I've been just, um, I've been okay. <laughs> I think it's very, um, I mean, the time we're in right now, it's really, um, uncertain. Mm. 
Um, it's very, definitely very uncertain, but I definitely think that um, like online shows like Adobe Live, it definitely is so amazing to have. And it's like a place to go to when you're maybe feeling anxious or, um, you know, you want to just get your mind off of just all the, you know, maybe scary things happening. So, um, yeah, but it's definitely great to know there's, you know, creative spaces online to go to. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we How love- How I, I've been good. I can't complain. You know, I have, yeah. I'm, what we do here at Adobe Live, a lot of it can be done from home, which is, which makes me happy because we're able to continue to provide many of these shows for people who might be struggling. And we see it often, right? We see people in the chat saying that they, they lost their job or they're very uncertain about their current job and they're looking to transition to something else. And we're running shows almost all day on UI and UX design. We've got shows on video editing, uh, photography, photo editing. Then we have daily challenges in that mix. And there's a, I mean, right now there's 713 people watching and you know, that's even if one person gets something from what you're designing and what you're talking about, that's all, that's worth it. And we see comments all the time about people who are just super appreciative. Um, so I'm, I'm super sure. glad that we can continue these. You know, usually this type of format would be hosted from our San Francisco office. But the team behind the scenes have worked incredibly hard to make sure that we can continue these shows from the comfort of our own home. Yes, definitely. Yeah, and it's it's definitely an uncertain time, like you said. Um, yeah. We'll get through it. It'll it'll take a while, I think. Yeah. But it'll pass. It will. We've been through. Hum humanity has been through a lot, and um, <laughs> you know we'll we'll a get lot. through it. So I guess as I mentioned in my presentation, um, I definitely wanted to incorporate, um, you know, motivational elements um, in the app. So right now I am just working on an actual progress um, card that okay. the user can see. So um, because this is a new user, there's, you know, not really going to be progress that they can see, but I definitely thought this would be a really great element to incorporate. Yeah, that could be very helpful because I think when, because there are so many different steps to take when creating a business, mm -hmm. I think a lot of users just kind of blow through a bunch of them. They probably miss yeah. a few and they don't really know exactly. And some of them are, it's like a domino effect. You have to do X, Y, and Z in order to get to another step. And, you know, it could, it's very easy to miss some of those. Oh, I agree. So we have a few suggestions in the chat. Let's see. So Jennifer is saying possibly the ability to talk to somebody through a webcam. And that could be really interesting. That's a, that's a perfect yeah. opportunity for, you know, a pandemic, right? Usually, especially if you're doing taxes or something like that, you would go into one of these tax companies stores and you would talk to them in person and now you maybe just start a video chat so that could be fun and let's see what other suggestions eric says a COVID escape button links to various services that are there to help us throughout this that's very very creative yeah or even just a chat like a way that you can chat with um, different business owners. Yeah. I think that'd be really cool to incorporate. Mm -hmm. Hey, Sharzil, welcome. If you are joining in late, you can always, if you want to, you can always rewind this stream. If you are watching on YouTube, I should probably point out that uh, we are taking a look at comments on Behance. So head over to behance.net slash live. You can watch the stream there. You can chat along, ask questions for Marissa. And it's a good time. Oops. Whoa. <laughs> it's 1 a.m. In India, it's past midnight. It's 1 a.m. And Vipin is still watching. I love seeing people from all over the world just tuning in at crazy hours of the day. 
Wow. It's really late. That's mm -hmm. awesome that you're joining us. I see you're using the magical repeat grid. Oh yeah, any chance I can, I definitely use the repeat grid. <laughs> yeah. And what's this section for? So this is going to be um, different buttons. So it's going to um, show the business creation process. So um, the first one is planning. So creating the business plan. So I'm just going to write plan. And then this is going to be name. Oops. And then register and branding. And PM is pointing out something interesting. She says, in Austria, there are several new laws every day for businesses. It's really hard to check what you really need. So a list or contacts in an app, um, which financially help you could apply for. Which, which, what financial help you could apply for. So yeah, it's an interesting point. You know, laws are always changing. And having some sort of a list of what you need to do or like you're designing at the top, the progress bar is definitely beneficial. Thank you, yeah. Okay. All right, so again, I mean, even as I'm designing, it's so hard to not be very, um, you know, I guess we're designing to make everything pixel perfect. Right. <laughs> so it's like a struggle of trying to just put everything there, but then oh, this should be, you know, eight pixels or 16 pixels, <laughs> but I know it's just a wireframe, but um, I'm trying to not be too caught up in making everything perfect. <laughs> totally. And what point would you, you know, everything's very gr monotone and gray right now. What point would you start building out a design system? Not necessarily, you know, applying those colors to the project, but maybe brainstorming what the main colors would be or what typefaces you might want to use yeah um personally i actually think of that when i um just start even thinking of the app that i'm designing or mm -hmm. the website that i'm designing i mean um i actually already came up with um a design system for the app and nice. um i think it's really great to have an idea of the logo and just like the um i guess the emotion that you want to convey with your um because it does start with the logo and just like your uh, mission statement like i think once you kind of have an idea of that um it definitely helps to apply all of that to the app um and just um how you want to make everything look yeah. And well, I do start that pretty early on in my process. Okay. And talking about color theory, maybe, maybe we'll see this a little bit later on when you start introducing colors, but I'm thinking, you know, through the process of thinking about colors, and I know you've already done this, but is there, were there specific colors as you were thinking things through that you want to focus on or avoid? Because I know sometimes things like red could induce frustration or anger. It's good for food because you might be hungry, but for a business or medical app, would you want to go down that route or do you stick with greens and blues, which are a little bit more soothing and calm? Mm -hmm. um, for sure. I mean, I definitely, um, I mean, when I was thinking of how to style and color the application, I definitely wanted to incorporate something that's inspiring. Yeah. Um, and just a color to me that what really stood out is the color yellow mm. um like really bright colors and yeah so i think for an app like this i want to choose colors that are uplifting inspiring and you know motivating so something that's bright and that stands out i don't want it to or i don't want to use anything that's going to be maybe too serious um yeah. or too boring because I know it's a lot to create a business and it's um, it could be even scary if it's your first time or you might feel unsure, but um, hopefully by using this app and hopefully using colors that are bright and uplifting, um, it'll just help you that much more to stay on track. Yeah. 
I agree. I love that. And Jennifer is asking, is there a recommended size for buttons? Sometimes they feel too small. Um, yeah, you definitely don't want to make your buttons too small because you, you know, if you're using your finger and it's just like, you definitely want to make sure the touch target is at least 48 um, yeah. pixels. I'd say that's the standard in terms of a touch target. So you want yeah. your button to, you know, be tappable. <laughs> I agree. And we see this a lot with newer designers who are entering our daily challenges or we're taking a look at our, their portfolio reviews, which is one thing I love about these reviews is it gives us the opportunity to educate on some best practices. And we see that some newer designers like to cram as much as possible into a single artboard, which sometimes it could work, but sometimes it also um, hurts your, the experience because the text size gets a lot smaller, the buttons get a lot smaller, and some yeah. of these devices like phones, even though the screens are getting larger, um, as Enna is saying, think about fat fingers, right? Not everyone's fingers are the same size, so you have to make sure that that button is big enough that anyone can just kind of reach in and then press it. And another cool thing that you could possibly do, especially if you're working in an application like XD, is just hook it up. Hook up your phone to your computer via USB, or we can even preview your app through the Creative Cloud or the Adobe XD app if it's saved to the cloud. And you can just preview as you're designing what is on your screen. So it kind of helps you get a real world feel. Because if you're zoomed all the way in to your design and you're like making a button at like 200%, you can't really get that perspective of what that's going to look like. So sometimes, you know, zooming out like Marissa is doing right now or previewing yeah. on your phone can help tremendously. Yeah, for sure. Natasha is asking, is this app going to be targeted to Canada, North America or global? What is your target audience? Um, so right now, my target audience is um, or are Canadians. Mm -hmm. um, I do for the registration right now it's definitely um like the process that we will be walking through is someone that lives in ontario but i definitely hope to expand to um the united states so first canada we're gonna you know have all the canadians on board and then maybe yep. i can expand it to you know the united states and maybe even worldwide but i definitely nice. need to do more research on um the business registration pro, uh, process in other um, regions. Yeah, it's, it's probably very different in the United States versus Canada versus New Zealand, Australia. Everywhere is going to be very different. So, um, you know, once you, it's good to focus on one place first and then branch out as you see fit. All right. So I also will have a bottom navigation. So I'm just going to go to the Google Material Design UI kit, and I'm just gonna grab this right here. I'm just gonna copy it. And then I will paste it here. Oops. Just behind here. And as I'm designing, I definitely like to, um, I mean, of course, this is the wireframe, but I like to see what it would actually look like on a mobile device, which is why I have the, um, you know, system um, components on the artboard. Yeah, and I think that's very important, especially on, not to bring up iOS, but especially on, you know, maybe it's not just limited to iOS, but on iPhones, because I'm familiar with them, they've got that notch at the top, the good old notch that everyone loves. They also have a home indicator at the bottom, that little bar right down below that um, covers elements. So you have to make sure that you don't have anything underneath any of those because per the guidelines of iOS, you can't have anything that's um, under, you can't have any interactive elements that's underneath that home indicator because you can't really get to it. It's used to swipe up and go to the home screen. And also that notch, you don't want to put things too close to it because then it gets very claustrophobic and also you won't be able to tap on things. So adding overlays like Marissa's doing will really help you lay things out and figure out you know, where things should be, what the, 
the proper breathing room might be, because you definitely don't want to cram things in there. You want things to nicely breathe. Yeah, and the beauty of, you know, these UI kits that, um, you know, Apple and Google have provided is they already kind of set up everything for you. So it's super yeah. easy to just grab it and just modify it as needed. Totally. So that's now, kind of what the... I'm doing right now. Oh, go, go ahead. Yeah, this is just what I'm doing right now. So super easy. <laughs> nice. Now thinking about the navigation bar, have you put any thought into, you know, what those icons are going to be? Home is a pretty good, actually, it looks like you're, you've yeah. got my business over to the right. You've got yeah. home and you've got this mysterious one in the middle you haven't gotten to yet. Yeah, it's, uh, it's coming up soon, but, um, so yeah, I just chose the home um, and then I also want to have educational resources. So, mm. um, you know, when you're, you know, it's nice to have all the steps laid out, but you also probably want to learn more um, business skills. Um, so I definitely wanted to incorporate uh, learning aspect in the app or a place where you can access resources regarding, you know, business planning, um, maybe how to, or five best ways to choose a name, like articles on that. So that's definitely something I wanted to incorporate. Nice. And I struggle with this sometimes, especially when building navigation bars, is how many icons are too many? Do you do, do three? Do you do four, five? Obviously, probably more than five is going to get very crammed. And then yeah. do you use a hamburger menu to hide the rest of them? Or how do you how do you handle that? Um, yeah, I think definitely you don't want to put too many because um, it's definitely going to be overwhelming and you won't be able to, like after a while, you can't really fit, um, you know, a really nice um, padding around each tab. Right. So you definitely want to make sure that you maybe use a minimum of three and then a maximum of four or five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you definitely don't want to put too many. Yeah, and I know you're using icons from Google Material that you grabbed on their website, but when you're not using that, where do you find your icons? Um, I know there's so many resources where you can find icons. Um, you can use, I use Flat Icon. Mm, that's a good one. Flat Icon's a really good resource. Have you heard yeah. of Flat Icon? I have, yeah. There's also, I think it's also included in the icons for design plugin in xd which is a great plugin if anyone needs open source icons um i'd be interested to hear from the chat if anyone's watching on behance right now where do you get your icons whether they're paid libraries or they're open source definitely throw some links in the chat i'd love to see those i'm a i'm an icon hoarder <laughs> over the years i've purchased so many icon sets it just i can't keep up where do you, what icons do you use? Um, I use the symbol icons. We also have a, a set that we purchased internally. I forget what they're called, um, but I also signed up for, uh, oh, what is it called? Shape.io, I think, or shape.so, okay. I think it is, um, by Ming. He just, he's the creator of uh, the Angle plugin, I think. He just came out with a new service with, with a ton of new icons that can be all customized. Uh, Cars pointed out Nucleo, which I also have, um, Adobe Spark, Flat Icons, another Nucleo, Adobe Stock is a good one. Oh, icons Nucleo, 8. that's a good one. Yeah. Font Awesome. There's some good suggestions in here. Bex says she loves the icon plugin. Me too. I use that a lot and you can't go wrong with that because all of those icons are open source. So you don't have to worry about copyright issues or anything like that. But I definitely encourage, if you can, you know, purchase, purchase icons if you have the ability to. It definitely helps out creators of those, that content, especially in times like this who, you know, they may be struggling. So if you have some extra cash, and you see some great icons out there, go for it. Definitely. Right, so now I'm working on the plan screen. So um, 
I guess when a user clicks plan, it's going to take them to this screen. Mm -hmm. um, and this is where you will see all the steps necessary to write your business plan. Nice. Is this going to be like checklists or is it going to be text fields? What are you thinking? Um, it's going to be different buttons and okay. yeah, it's going to be like a card where you can just click it. And it's also going to show um, the progress you've made um, for each section and the user will click mark as done. And that's going to kind of track um, how, like the different sections that you've completed and it will display in the progress um, indicator Got it. or the uh, graph. Oh yeah, the noun project is another good one. So Raphael is asking, Marissa, when you when designing an app, do you always stick with the respective UI kit or can you do something more custom? Um, so like using Google Material Design, do you mean? Yeah, if you're using Google Material, or if you're designing for Android, right now you're using a lot of assets from Google Material. Do you ever oh, okay, yeah. bring in additional assets or create your own, just to kind of mix things up a little bit? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I definitely, um, yeah, I definitely, you know, look for more unique or custom um, icons. Sometimes I do even design my own, but um, there's so many, you know, available just for you to use without having to design it yourself. So I definitely take, um, use that to my advantage. Yeah, might as well, right? Yeah. So um, this is going to be just um, where you can, you know, see a sample business plan. And I'm sure this will be very helpful um, when they first, you know, figure out how, what they need to do to write the business plan. Yeah. So is this kind of like a template that they can kind of riff off of and make their exactly. own? Yeah, nice. it definitely will be. Yeah. I like that. And I can definitely see a world where there might be or maybe this template either dynamically changes based on the type of business they're creating, or there might be several different types of templates for maybe creative businesses or medical businesses or that sort of thing. Yeah. Now thinking back, uh, you know, obviously you've, you're running a very successful business, but thinking back to when you started or even, you know, years in, what were some of the challenges that you faced when not necessarily just starting a business, but even running that business uh, several years after? Um, I guess some of the challenges is, you know, finding clients. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's definitely, I think, a very common problem for a lot of um, freelancers. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely say finding clients, but the fact that um, my work is pretty visible. I mean, I have a blog and I have a YouTube channel and I actually am working on a redesign for my site. Um, so just, um, yeah, it's, it, I, I definitely think it helps being visible and online. And, um, so that helps with, you know, you know, I guess clients reaching out to me. Um, but in terms of challenges, I definitely say finding client is maybe the biggest one. Um, yeah. What what tips have you found that have really helped find clients? Because we hear that a lot, is people want to get into design, they want to get into freelance, but they're worried that they're not going to be able to find clients or they're they're really hunting, they're putting their work out there and then nothing's yeah. coming through. What would you say to help people out? Um, I would say network. I definitely think networking helps. Um, reach out to friends, colleagues, tell them about what you're doing. Don't be shy. Don't, um, yeah, I think definitely reach out to people. Um, even making sure that you um, are visible online. I think in this day and age, you definitely want to um, be in people's faces. Like you definitely yeah. want to make sure you're, you know, you have your portfolio. You're on very popular sites like Behance and Dribble. 
um, or even Twitter or Instagram. I know a lot of people mm -hmm. just have like an Instagram page. Um, yeah, I think just taking um, or using social media to your advantage, I think that's definitely a really great way to um, find clients and put yourself out there. I agree. And that's how, you know, the Adobe Live team finds many of our guests is through websites like Behance. We're always browsing. I shouldn't say we because I don't I don't do much of that. But the team is always browsing Behance to find some great looking work and, and you know, they'll contact the artist. And I know a lot of companies who are looking for designers, they're always on websites like Behance and Dribbble, especially since that, you know, there's there's usually places where you can go to find people who are looking for work actively um so that always helps of course starting that process is not always easy you know if you if you're starting from scratch you don't have instagram you don't have a behance account you don't have anything that's sometimes one of the hardest parts coming up with a name uploading your first bit of work and thinking back to when you started this process marissa what what tips would you offer on starting social media accounts that are focused on attracting clients? Um, I would definitely say, um, I guess share your process. I mean, I think for me personally, I've always been really shy in terms of sharing my process and I'm just worried it's not perfect. Yeah. And I think letting go of perfection and just being the best maybe because we all have to start somewhere. Um, and I think showing your progress throughout the years is a beautiful thing. Um, if I, I'm sure if I showed you guys my first website that I've ever designed, it's probably really, really bad. Mm -hmm. um, Mine too. Yeah. And actually that's even something that I'm still, I still work on. And that's why um, I think even live streaming everything is so amazing because you're able to see someone's process and um, yeah, so I definitely think, um, yeah, just don't be scared, put yourself out there and use social media to, to your advantage, share your process, share your work. Um, yeah. Yeah. You just have to dive in and do it. And speaking of sharing your work and showing that process, one thing that I personally love when I'm browsing work is seeing case studies. So like, especially on Behance, that allows you to build out these very long form projects is I want to see how you started, you know, going back to Marissa's sketches all the way hidden at the top left of this document. I want to see that stuff because that really shows me if I'm looking for a designer, it shows me that you really thought this process through. You thought what the user experience is going to look and feel like you thought, uh, you know, what the colors might look and feel like the typefaces from start to finish. If I just see a very beautiful looking final design, you know, it might look very nice, but I don't know how it actually functions. I don't know what steps you took to get there. Did you just throw a bunch of rectangles and drop shadows and stuff on a, on a design and call it a day? Or did you actually think this thing through? Did you talk to users? Did you test with users? You know, these sorts of things can go a really long way and definitely attracts uh, clients, I think. Yeah, definitely. So something really cool in XD is the Google Sheets plugin. Oh, I love this um, thing. Yeah. Um, so I, I definitely will be getting into that. But right now, another it's pretty similar to Google Sheets, but um, you're able to drag and drop a text file um, right onto a repeat grid. Yep. Um, and I know Google Sheets allows you to do that, but I already have um, text file set up here. So um, instead of just typing it all individually, because there is um, kind of a lot of steps, um, I'm just going to drag and drop it into the repeat grid. So I have the title. I'm just going to drag, drop it in. Fancy. And then a description. There we go. So really quickly, I guess I can go over the business plan and the different sections in it. So um, the first thing you want to do is an executive summary. And this is just a description of your business, then your business opportunity, what your business is about, marketing and sales strategy. Um, you want to, you know, go over your team, who you're working with, 
um, daily operations, financial forecast, and then I also will have um, a section where you can just add your own custom section because um, you might also want to add maybe something else to your business plan that's not necessarily in the um, steps or sections that are outlined here. Right. So I'm just going to ungroup this. So Laura is asking, can you give an example of a well-presented case study? So let me, I'm going to hop over to my screen just for a second. And one thing you can do to definitely see some well-presented case studies is go to Behance and sort by, go to the interaction or XD section and sort by most appreciated. And you'll definitely find some amazing ones because people love appreciating really nice in-depth case studies. But here's one, the, the literally the first one that I clicked on and it's super in-depth and this is the kind of thing that i definitely look for you know you have a very eye-catching image at the top that you know either shows the final result or something that to kind of get your get your interest going um, this one's not in english so i don't know exactly understand what this says but it looks like there's a concept at the top a little bit of a description then you start getting into typefaces some colors um, possibly some grids got some sketches or some wireframes, some low fidelity, more grids, right? And let's take a look at another one. We're gonna be going into portfolio reviews in a little bit in about 20 minutes. So during that time, we can definitely talk more about that. But another one, you know, about this project, let us know what the challenges are of the project. What are you trying to accomplish with this? Typefaces and fonts, some low fidelity, right and this is the kind of thing that a lot of people look for this is just a beautiful looking uh, case study so it's it's stuff like this whereas if you go to something like dribble while dribble's fantastic and there's some beautiful work on there it's mostly just a finalized beautiful shot and that's it there's really no substance behind it whereas on behance you can just browse through hundreds of these things there's really you can really see the start to finish process and it really helps understand what went on to get to that final result, which is incredibly valuable. Oh, so this is the, uh, you're working on the name generator now? Yes, I am. Nice. So um, yeah, again, with the name screen, there's going to be a business naming guide. So just an additional resource that you can quickly, you know, check out when you first go on the screen if you need to. And yeah, so I definitely want to incorporate just the more educational and resources that one can access when they're using the app. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I definitely want to make it pretty prominent. Yeah. Jennifer has an interesting question. What if you worked on a project that was internal for a company? How would you show your work without actually exposing the company? Hmm. That's a good question. I guess if there is like a NDA, hmm. that's a good question. Yeah, um, I know a lot of people, you know, so a lot of companies, depending on the company, of course, um, will allow you to expose some things. Like if you go to them and say, you know, I want to create a case study on whatever this might be, the website or the project or whatever it might be, um, they'll allow you to expose some things and they'll probably ask to see it before you publish it live just so they can make sure that no confidential information was released. Because sometimes a lot of companies will use case studies as a marketing tool. They'll point to the case study and they'll just show you know how we got to the final product a lot of people like seeing that stuff but of course there are some companies like if you're working for apple for example there's a good chance that none of that is getting out and you know unfortunately that's the reality in some cases but i would try to be as open as possible especially when you're starting the process you know ask them right up front i know i'm going to be working on this project i would love to share some of the work that i've that i've done and how i got to the final result after it's all complete is that something you would allow me to do and if they say yes then make sure that's kind of in the contract so that afterwards they can't backtrack and say oh no you can't show anything now but yeah the reality is some companies just will not allow you to show anything which you know 
and hopefully they're paying you well. <laughs> So are these, looking at this this um, artboard, will these be different buttons to go to the name generator and the name search or? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. So now, oops. I'm gonna duplicate the artboard and we're gonna design a name generator. Belleville is asking, how did you get started and would you do it differently? Get started in... I'm assuming um, design and websites design? and everything you're doing right now. Um, I remember using Photoshop when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I would read blogs on design, like web design, um, and just follow tutorials like that's just like the earliest memory I have of me and how I got into design so um yeah that's how I got into it and then just through my own I guess it's, it was like a hobby <laughs> like I would just design websites and I'm like 10 years old and like <laughs> My dream was to be a web designer. It was, it's, mm -hmm. it's really weird, like a quite, like honestly, like I'm not even just saying that, like I really, I got into it when I was really young and there's nothing that I would change. I mean, I definitely learned so much because I've been doing it forever, but um, yeah, it's, I was so young when I started. <laughs> yeah, me too. I remember, I think it was, I, I can't remember exactly when it was, but I, I, I started using Photoshop and I think it was Photoshop like 2.5 or something before layers were even introduced. And then of course Photoshop 3 came around and there were layers. And I think the computer I was on had an older version on it. Um, so I, I'm not that old, but um, it, yeah, Photoshop was very different back in the day. And that led me into my interest in graphic design. And that led into my my dream of becoming a 3d animator which i went to school for that never happened oh. obviously but um but yeah it, it's funny how things kind of shift around and you find new interests and you lose interests and yeah. life takes you on interesting journeys for sure yeah i'd be interested to hear from the chat if um if you weren't doing what you're doing right now what would you want to do and Marissa, if you were if you were not a designer or a web developer, what would you be doing instead? Ah, that's a good question. <laughs> what would I be doing? Honestly, like I really love design, um, but I guess if I wasn't doing this, I would probably I'd probably be doing something related to food. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because I love to cook. Um, yeah, maybe it would be something related to food. I don't know what. Nice. There's some very popular food blogs and food you know, video series out there. I can definitely see yeah. that. Probably be a food blogger. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd still have a blog and a YouTube channel, but it'd be <laughs> <Right>. about food. <laughs> but Jennifer is saying chef. She would want to be a chef. And uh, Matthias is oh. saying architecture. Tia wants to be a dancer. Chris, a tennis coach. Edgar wants to be a stockbroker. Michael, public speaking. PM would be a gardener. Nice. If I, I think if I didn't, if I wasn't a designer and I would never got into animation, I'd probably want to be some sort of like astrophysicist or something. I'm like so fascinated Ooh. with space and planets and the universe. I'm just terrible at science. <laughs> which is a problem so Anna, Anna, Ina or Anna took a break from design and became a makeup artist nice just a quick reminder we have about 10 minutes until we dive into some portfolios so definitely stay tuned for that. If you haven't submitted your portfolio yet, hit that portfolio review tab 
at the top right corner on Behance. We're going to take a look at two of them shortly. And then tomorrow, we're going to be taking a look at some daily creative challenge entries, which is going to be super fun. Jan Eric is I saying, I cannot I just... wait for portfolio reviews. I can't wait I know. to see It'll be super fun. all the submissions. Yeah. Jan is saying, I can't get over that Pluto isn't the planet anymore. So what's going on on this screen? All right, so I guess when you tap name generator, it's gonna give you or lead you to the name generator um, screen. So you just enter a query, tap generate names, and then it's gonna list just a bunch of potential business names. And then when the user taps a business name, it's going to lead them to um, searching the name, like the actual name search to make sure that um, it's available for the user to use mm -hmm. um, as their official business name. Nice. Jason is asking, I notice you were individually modifying aspects of each field. How do you maintain consistency between screens? So, do you mean the buttons or the cards? He might be. Okay, so how to maintain consistency? Um, well, again, this is like, I just, you know, duplicate the elements and just make sure they're all the same. But because this is just a wireframe, um, I guess I'm not too worried about, you know, making everything perfect. But when I'm actually doing the high fidelity, high fidelity design, um, I create components mm -hmm. and then that's when I have a component that's when I um, just go in and edit it and reuse them across different screens to make sure it's consistent yeah so that's what I love about components is that even if you have 500 artboards if you're using the same component on all of them you just have to edit the master and it pushes the changes to every single one which is great But the repeat grid definitely helps. <laughs> That's true, because repeat grid as well allows you to change one of them and it changes all of them as well. Yeah. Yep, looks like that's what Jason was wondering. The text inside the fields appear, you are manually spacing okay. and shrinking them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and make sure to come back tomorrow as well because I think that's when Marissa's going to get into some high fidelity work and that's when components and states and all these fun things will start to emerge and it's going to take design to new levels. Stay tuned. Mm -hmm. So now I'm just working on the name search screen. Elena is asking, is the grid something already on XD or is that something that was imported? And she might be referring to the pixel grid that you have on the artboards, I believe. Oh yeah, so what you can do is just, um, when, you have, when you select an artboard, um, you can see the grid options here. And you can yep. choose either layout or square and you can you know modify the grid size here. Nice. Yeah, we've got six minutes until portfolio review, so definitely get those in if you haven't yet. It's gonna be a ton of fun. I'd love to know from the chat as you're if you, if you have been building portfolios to try to attract clients 
What are some tips that you would offer to others who maybe haven't started that process yet? That's definitely one of the hardest things. I recently built, a, built out a case study and it could be very time consuming and a little bit frustrating figuring out what should go where, what, how you should start the case study because you want to get as many clicks as possible. So you need a really attractive thumbnail that people are going to click on. And then, you know, what does that flow look like? There's a lot that goes into building out portfolio pieces. So on this screen, you know, the name generator and the name search, what would happen once someone finds a name? Would they be able to lock it in or would, I guess, as you're building out right now, you can register it directly? Yeah. yeah. Nice. So Ina is asking, do you think it's okay to expand on past projects in your portfolio? Let's say you just have a logo to make it a case study. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I would also encourage that. If you have projects on Behance that, you know, you just put up a single image, I would definitely go back. And if you can, if you have some of those assets from when you built it, definitely expand on it. Show your sketches, show uh, the colors you used, the research behind it, if you did any. I think that even just a few extra little bits of information can go a long way. So where do you see this app going after you've designed it? What do you want to do with it? Do you want to have it built into a functioning service or you're going to put out a case study and hope someone picks it up? Um, well, I, I'm definitely um, hoping to flesh it out even more um, because there's more um, screens and whatnot that I, you know, I won't be designing for the two days stream. Right. So I'm hoping to um, flesh it out even more on a live stream. Nice. But that'd be yeah. really interesting if I could, you know, find a way or like pitch it and really take this to the next level and make it like a legitimate um, app. <laughs> yeah, one of our really previous cool. guests, Jack Watson, who was in the chat earlier, I don't know if she's still here, she might be listening, but she was on Adobe Live, I think it was last year. I can't keep track of the days anymore, but she built out a donut delivery app or donut pickup oh. application. Yeah, I where mean, you can you know see visuals of donuts. You can add them to your, a box with fun animations. And then she have, she got contacted by a local donut shop, and I believe, okay. if I'm not mistaken, they actually produced it, which is super cool. Wow, I, yeah. that's incredible. I thought that was wow. really cool when I heard that. That's really cool. Oh, there's Jack. It's making me hungry. <laughs> I know. Sorry about I'm that. I'm hungry now for a donut. All right, so now I've moved on to the registration process. Mm -hmm. So hopefully I have enough time. I don't know. We have but if two minutes. not, I will, ah! <laughs> we can always oh, come, no. once we've reviewed some portfolios, we can always come back to it. Okay, awesome. But if not, I will definitely be sure to recap everything. Yeah. Tomorrow. Oh, and Jack says, indeed going to be live streaming designing their site soon. So yeah, that's that's incredible that she was able to get some work just, you know, from designing a donut app on Adobe Live. Isn't that cool? That's very inspiring. Business registration. I remember going through that. It was not a fun process. And certainly back when I, when did I do it? When I was- Did you do it in Ontario? I did, I think it was 2007, I wanna say, right before, maybe 2006, right before I created my YouTube channel. Okay. Yeah, or maybe right after, I think it was 2007. I still have the paper somewhere. But yeah, it was, it was a painful process because especially in 2007, websites weren't that great. 
I don't re even remember if I did it online or I did it in person. It was it was a blur, but it wasn't a great yeah. process, and I would have killed for an application that I can just dive into, and you know have a good user experience and just get the process done very quickly. For sure, I mean there's so much room for improvement, like this whole business registration process. So yeah, and I can definitely see you know integrations with things like TurboTax or H&R Block is once, you, once you've actually established that business, then it just becomes another part of this services process to help you with your taxes and, you know, get a social security number or it's not a social security number. It's a, I forget what it's called, but specific to businesses. Yeah. All right. So let's hop over to to our faces just for a second. I'm going to send over, because we're not in the same room, I'm gonna send over the portfolios so we can take a look at them together. Yay! Let me find our chat. It's somewhere. I don't know where it is, but it's it's around. Let's see. Where is our chat? Here it is, okay. I'm going to send over this one and also I'm going to send over this one here. Okay. All right, now let me hop back over. Move the screen over. I have too many windows open. All right, so we are going to start with, there we go. All right, so we are going to start with Abdu, Abdu Malji. If I mispronounce anyone's name, I really do apologize, but uh, this designer is from Dubai, and he's got a little bit of a write-up at the bottom. He's an ex experienced and passionate creative designer with a keen eye for creating clean, professional user interfaces that increase user experience. Nice. I like that. He also has this a little bit of a so skill good. set. Yeah. All right, let me move this out of the way so I can see the chat. There we go. That's better. Okay. So, he's got some great looking pieces, and quite a few pieces actually. So I'm gonna start on the first one, and then we'll, we'll choose one that you choose. So this one looks like it's for a cryptocurrency application. He's got a really nice header image at the top. It's called Crypto Light. A little bit of background on this particular application, but what I already see are some sketches. They're just images of actual paper sketches, which is so cool. You don't see that very often. I love I love seeing that. And we've yeah, got this some... is amazing. Wow, I love seeing the process, the thinking, and you know how you plan on laying everything out. Yeah, I think it was possibly Laura earlier was asking, you know, what makes a good case study. And so far, from what I'm seeing from this one, this is it. It's you know a lot of the the early on process. You have a great image at the top, which shows what it's going to eventually look like. He has some user flows, which in a cryptocurrency type of application is incredibly important. You have some colors, which they're laid out really nicely. I like the little diamond uh, look on this, the blue. Yeah, and the... that looks awesome. Yeah. Typography, Avenir is a fantastic typeface I use quite often. Did you the create these icons by I was, like I was just about custom? to ask. <laughs> Yeah, I would want to. I would love to know that. I mean, they look like they could be stock, but at the same time, he, it's possible he created that. Oh, he is in the chat. So let us know okay. if you did create these illustrations and icons because they are very beautiful. Well done. Yeah, wireframes. Very nice. Very clean. Very clean. I love the minimalist style and looks awesome. Yeah. Got an onboarding flow, which again, looks very clean. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult with something like blockchain to really describe what this is. And and he's saying yes. So I think he may have created some of these or all of these illustrations and icons, which makes it wow. even better. And I, I would go as far as to throw it in there, throw in the case study that you personally created these illustrations because that could be something that a client is looking for. Yeah, definitely. Very creative. Yeah. Registration. I think the very... onboarding, it'd be really great to um, 
have a way to demonstrate that you can, you know, maybe interact with it, like swipe. Mm. Um, That's a good I do point. say there's skip, but um, I think it'd be really cool if the user can also kind of swipe through each screen. Yep, I agree. Either put, you know, little pagination dots or yeah. an arrow of some sort or something to that extent. And the main screen, which looks really nice. I like how things are are breathing, which is which is great. Things aren't. Although I will say that you know, looking at the top of the iPhone, the, the frame, the title Crypto Light is kind of peeking underneath it. So definitely move that down a little bit, including the the menu and the QR code over to the right, just so that you know it's it's breathable. Yeah, I agree. This looks really good. I love your the colors you've used. I think it's very appropriate for, you know, a cryptocurrency app. Yeah. I think it's a really um, common color, the blue and the, the black, red. Those are really professional um, colors. It's a really nice professional palette. Yeah, I agree. And it really illustrates, you know, um, currency. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, so he's saying the bars at the side screen are the pagination. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, so okay. That one. Okay. I think, you know, it's a fun little touch. I just don't know. Yeah. I, I kind of see it, but at first glance, I didn't, it wasn't very apparent to me. Mm -hmm, yeah. But yeah, it's a, it's a nice little touch, but it might require a little bit of education. Yeah. Nice. But creative, very creative. Yeah, which one do you want to look at next? Um, let's see. What's kids? Kids play. Oh, I there think we it's go. That, that purple second, one. Yeah. Yes. Let's see. Kids. It's an online streaming video application that allows kids from age six to fourteen to view their favorite TV shows and movies, content at any time, at any given place. Security measures. Okay. All right, so on this one, what I would say is the first thing that stands out to me on this onboarding screen is that red button on the purple background with the white drop shadow. I don't know how I feel about that. It's it's kind of clashing a little bit. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I agree. I do think it it's it stands out and it does kind of clash with the purple. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think maybe choosing a different color. Yeah. Um, or maybe even an outline button. Um, definitely want to play around with that a little more. Yeah, if, if it's the only button on the screen, then you can definitely get away with a white button with purple text if you wanted to. Yeah. Yeah, the red. Got to be careful with the red because also, you know, red sometimes indicates an error or it indicates something you should not do. So I would, I would lighten that up, maybe try white or like Marissa is suggesting, try an outline button as well. It could go a long way. Parents. Mm. It's a little hard to see the text. Oh yeah. For each, so maybe um, instead of laying it out four, or maybe just do one screen at a time vertically. Mm -hmm. Just so it's a little easier to see. Yeah, and on devices like iPads, you definitely have a lot of room to work with. So if you have to push the uh, passcode down a little bit, I know it's right now it's centered, but if you if you have to push it down so that the text at the top is a little bit bigger, so it's easier to read, you can definitely do that. Mm -hmm. But I love the fact that there's you know parental controls in an application like this you know I have a daughter and she's just getting into shows and, and stuff on YouTube kids and it's it's a weird world there's a lot of content out there even on the YouTube kids app that's just so weird and probably shouldn't exist so it's <laughs> so important to lock this stuff down and monitor what your kids are watching because yeah. one wrong show could teach them so much of so much that they should not be doing yeah, you definitely want to make sure that uh, they're not watching anything weird. <laughs> yeah. 
especially in the day where anybody can create anything there's some weird stuff out there yeah all right the gallery but looks i really like nice. the um the touch like i think it's a really good size to tap yeah it's definitely a really good um size so great job yeah the gallery down here looks really nice it, the nice big thumbnails yeah it's pretty easy to know that you can swipe over to see more oh there we have the outline buttons <laughs> there we go yep or the input fields that looks really great mm -hmm. and i think it, yeah it definitely it it stands out but it doesn't clash so i yeah. think that really looks good um i agree and i think it's it's a very cute design where it says like time's up kiddo so it's not yeah. you know blaring in their face it's a it just kind of it's a nice nudge that their their viewing time's up mm -hmm. we've got some settings down below that looks pretty good great yeah, job great job all right let's see let's take a look at one more then we'll hop over to the other portfolio there's so many to choose from uh let's take a look at this experience one with the x uh, first one in the second row is kind of standing out to me Ooh. Let's see. It's a great Experience. header image. It's very clean. Let's see. So, Experience Design is a team of multidisciplinary digital product experts that extend design and development departments of most innovative companies. All right. We've got another nice case study with some typography, Proxima Nova, great typeface. We've got some colors, the red the black and the gray very sophisticated palette yeah i like it the landing page is super minimalistic which is great what i would say is you know, on the landing page you've got the header and you've got the button which looks great but over to the right you have this dummy text what i would probably do is fill that in with something that tells people who are viewing this case study what this might be you know what it obviously it's probably some sort of a design agency of some sort so write something in there that kind of conveys what that might be yeah i agree yeah same thing down below in the areas of expertise is really and i know it, it could take a while but kind of flesh that out just so that it really makes sense to people viewing this that yeah. this you know this company focuses on seo and and what things what part of seo they focus on as well yeah and i think having the actual copy um on your design it's definitely beneficial because um you know the size of the you know the character count might change and you right. don't want to design specifically for the lorem ipsum you want to design for the actual content yep i agree or copy yeah yeah the rest looks really nice very clean i love the lack of color there's just like a little bit of black a little bit of blue a little bit of white and that's about it which is really nice mm -hmm. nice all right awesome great job Let's go ahead and hop over to Ash, who I believe might be in the chat. I do see Ash once in a while hanging out in Adobe Live. So Ash is from New Delhi, India. And the About Me section says, creativity in simplistic design for everyone currently in the last year of university. Projects I've worked on, UI and UX design, logo design, graphic design, speaks English and Korean, which is amazing. And he's got an email address, features Adobe Live. Cool. All right, which one stands out to you? Hmm. Is this a video game? Twitch streamer? Identity? What about one UI kit? Let's do that. All right. Love the header image. Looks like it's for Android, possibly. Okay, so he's outlining all the different elements inside of this UI kit. Focus block. Content is the focus of the page. It's very clean. It's got a little bit of breathing room around it. 
Mm -hmm. I love the iconography. Oh, these are fun. I love the colors. Wow. That the one with the paintbrush is really nice. Mm -hmm. Roboto, Roboto. Colors and fonts, great. The one thing I will say, this is this is this is so tricky when you're outlining colors on a case study, is that grayish color, the grayish white, is getting a little bit lost on the background. So sometimes adding either a border or a very subtle drop shadow. You have to be very subtle because if the yeah. drop shadow is too harsh, then it could it could kind of distract from what the actual color is. Um, but yeah, colors are difficult. But put something either around it or below it just so that you can kind of see what exactly that color is. Yeah. 32 screens, fully editable. I think nice. this looks really great. I agree yeah. with Howard on, um, yeah, you definitely want to make sure it's not too blending into the background. You want it to stand out and improve the contrast. Um, but I think it looks really great. I love your presentation. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go ahead and click on this Fast and Furious Spy Racer illustration, or let's see what it is. Ooh. Okay. Oh, this is this is a collaboration from Eric Sue, which is, who is another fantastic community member. I'm not sure if he's in the chat. Um, Eric and Ash put this together. Oh, the one thing I would oh, I say. Love the video. Oh, there's a video. I haven't gotten there yet. So the one thing that I would say is, you know, just off looking at the thumbnail and then clicking on it and then looking at the header image, I don't know exactly what it is. Is it a video game? Is it a, a TV show? Is it a rebrand? I'm not quite sure. So add something either to the header or the thumbnail that just kind of gives viewers a little bit more context. Yeah, yeah I this... agree. Yeah, you're right. The video is really cool. Okay, so I see in the bottom left corner of this video that there's an N. It looks like Netflix possibly. So this could be for Netflix series, possibly, maybe. Fast. Okay, so it looks like it's a Netflix series. Oh, okay. So I guess, yeah, maybe being a little more clear on what you're showing, I think that's definitely beneficial, like a description of, you know, what we're looking at. Um, yeah. Because it is a little... Uh, I, I'm not quite sure exactly what I'm looking at. Is it um, a website? Just the video? Yeah, what was your role in a lot of this stuff? I agree with Marissa. Is It, a, it looks like it could be a website, maybe a landing yeah. page and marketing yeah. materials for this specific series. Mm -hmm. Which if it is, great job. It looks awesome, yeah. Yeah, looks really these great. assets here that show like Tony Toretto, um, great use of subtle glows behind mm -hmm. the active profile. It's very clean, very minimalistic. Oh, it looks like there's a video. Oh, okay. So it's transitioning between the different characters. Definitely the look and feel I'm getting is definitely appropriate for gamers. So I think that's pretty spot on in terms of your um, audience and yep. users. Yeah, I think this is good. That's awesome. I like it. It's also very in depth. It just goes on and on and on and on forever. <laughs> Great job. Yeah, I would I would say if you can add a little bit more context. I know it looks like Ash is going to talk to Eric about that, but add a little bit more context on what your role in this particular design and case study was, and it'll make it a little bit easier to understand. All right, let's choose one more from Ash. Which one looks pretty good? Uh, what's 10 minute design challenge? All right. Let's see that. So Have to complete within 10 minutes using only two colors and keeping it minimal. Oh, interesting. Hmm. So day one, stay home. Brief by Carrie Roper, head of design. Create a piece of communication that gets the stay at home message across. This could also include the social distancing advice too. Okay, so it looks like there's there's 10 of these challenges and I guess the 
image to the left is the actual piece. Okay. Don't run to hoard. Shop responsibly. <laughs> That's funny. I like that. <laughs> I will say about the first one, the stay at home one, I'm not exactly sure what I'm looking at. It almost looks like a tombstone. I don't know if that's what it's supposed to look like and then it looks like almost like an alien inside or below the tombstone. Or like it looks like two people are looking at like something on a pathway. Like the perspective is almost like they're viewing something. Yeah. That's coming out of like, I don't know, water. Or... Yeah, I'm not sure what that one yeah. is. But the toilet paper one, that one I get. That's a clear one. <laughs> yeah, because it, it took us a few weeks to find toilet paper at our local <laughs> grocery stores. Uh, day number three, create a fresh and unusual looking logo for a new company called Working From Home. Okay, so there's a home icon, there's a camera icon. That makes sense. Day four. So Ash says it's actually two people thinking in a bubble saying stay home. Okay, so I see, yeah, I see two people. Um, interesting. Yeah, interesting. it's, it's hard it to looks, see. Yeah. Yeah, and, and a lot of people are saying that's the COVID-19 cell in the middle. Okay, that I can see now. Okay, I get it. Okay. I get it. So maybe saying that in the description, I think, would be helpful. <laughs> yeah. But I think it looks really good. Yeah, Definitely. and it's so difficult to design with just two colors. So I commend yeah. you for that, because I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> Day number seven is really nice with that large search icon with the little uh, pins in the center. Oh, yeah. Yeah, some of these are really Finding cool. Finding a freelancer has never been easier. That's a good, I love that. Yeah. Nice. Day nine. Destroy enemies, not heroes. Oh, I love this one. That's yeah. a cool one. Brings me back Game to my Boy. Game Boy days. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Well, great job, Ash. Great job, Ash. It looks like Eric also joined as well. What's up, Eric? Hey, Eric. Right. I'm going to hop over back to your screen. Okay. And we have about three minutes left if you want to kind of wrap ah! up let people know who are just joining what we've or oh, not we what yeah. you have accomplished today and then what your plans <laughs> are for tomorrow all right so today i just did some wireframes for my business creation app um so again the splash screen login sign up onboarding screen let me take it the grid turn off the grid home screen um and then a screen where you can, you know, create a business plan, um, name your business, and then the registration screen. Um, so this is just gonna walk users through the whole business name registration process. Um, really quickly, let me just, uh, I'm hoping I can demo, demo how I can use Google Sheets to um, create the, all the questions. Yeah, that would be really cool. For the registration. So let me do that really quickly. So I'm using the repeat grid. I have um, uh, all my content here. So I'm going to need 12 cards. Go. And I'm just going to make sure I named everything correctly. So this is, let me go to my Google Sheets. So I have steps and questions. So questions, steps. And I'm just going to go to my plugins, Google Sheets, and then I'm going to paste it as a public link. Uh, let me make sure this is okay. All right, so it's mapping steps to steps, questions to questions. There we go. Look at that. 
So oh, now I have you. all of my questions. I didn't have to go through each and every, you know, title card and just update everything. So there we go. So now nice. I'm just going to ungroup it and I'm going to add all the questions and tomorrow we can add colors and I'll walk you through my whole um, design system that I set up for the app. Great. And, and if anyone missed that, we can definitely go through the Google Sheets plugin again tomorrow. It's a super cool plugin, especially if you're working with people who are managing data, just like we saw on that sheet, questions and that sort of thing. So stay tuned for tomorrow. Marissa is going to be adding some colors and high fidelity, maybe some prototyping, which is going to be super fun. But a big thank you to everyone joining us today. Stick around. We've got, I think Andrea is coming up in just a few minutes. And then we've got Veronica and Paul coming up right after that. Any parting words, Marissa? Thank you so much for having me. And I can't wait to join you guys again for tomorrow. Awesome. Stay tuned. See you all then. <laughs> Bye.